Hello, I'm Rob with ScrappyDoo.com, and I hope you're ready for another great tutorial. So we got an email from Judy, and she asked us if we could make this file for her. Um, you know, before I had her sketch it, you know, I said, hey, if you can sketch it, you know, scan it in, send it to us, we'll see what we can do. You know, no guarantees. So uh, she sent us a sketch right here, and I took a look at it. I was like, yeah, you can make it in Inkscape. Yeah, no problem. So um, we made the file for her, sent it to her in her email, and, uh, you know, here's the end result of it. You know, so this is what she made, you know, a little 12 by 12 page, welded the letters, you know, all around the uh, the inner square, and uh, went into uh, scale and went ahead and cut that. So I'm going to show you how to make this, you know, how to make this little frame. And uh, if you don't want to go through the process of making it, you can go to our website and, and download the free file to... Uh, uh, to make this. So alright, um, what I recommend first is have a reference, you know, in, in this point, uh, in this project here. It's going to be this sketch. And, uh, you know, she just scanned it in, I just imported it into, uh, into Inkscape. I'm just going to use it as a reference. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the, uh, the huge outer uh, green here that you see. And uh, we're going to do that by selecting the, the rectangle box. And I'm just going to select green. I'm going to uh, click and drag. And while I'm dragging, I'm going to hold down the control button to constrain it to be a square, not a rectangle. So uh, what we want is a square, not a rectangle. And I'm just going to release. Next, I'm going to uh, get my selector tool out right here. It's that top arrow. And you'll see the bounding boxes go over that rectangle we just created. And we're going to duplicate it. So we're going to hit uh, Control D. That will duplicate. And we're going to click it so we see that uh, the inner arrows are, uh, are pointing in because we're going to make uh, this next right here. We're going to make the, uh, the white part. So um, I'm going to change the color just so we can see the difference. You know, it's a little easier on the, on the computer. Uh, for your viewing anyway and I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag but while I'm dragging I'm holding down the shift button just so that uh, that it's gonna be resizing based upon the center of, uh, instead of like a like a corner like it is right there so holding the shift button down will allow you to do that so uh, once you uh, once you have it to the size that you like you know right uh, right there looks good you just release and that's it then we're gonna go ahead and duplicate uh, this blue rectangle that we just made by selecting that and hitting control D for duplication uh, once we duplicate we can uh, go up to the rotation arrows right here and you wanna click them while you're holding down the click button you wanna go ahead and hold uh, hold down the control button to uh, to rotate snap them. See see how that just snapped in increments. So that's what you want to do. And we just wanted uh, you know 90 degrees from from the original. And uh, it just looks like a little uh, you know little medical symbol right now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to union the blues. So let's go ahead and union the blues by uh, holding down the shift button. And we selected them. And then we're going to click Path, Union, and that just joined those together. And what we need to do next is we need to have that blue right here punch out the green. In order to do that, you, uh, you select the blue, hold the Shift button down, and select the green. And once we do that, we can go to Path, Difference, and it's just like having that blue just punch to the green and that's what's uh, that's what's left. All right, the last uh, you know almost the last step is we need that inner rectangle right here to uh, to give us our four uh, rectangles on the outer on the outer edge here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're just going to go ahead and select the rectangle tool. We're going to uh, select a corner up here and just going to click and drag. And while I'm clicking and dragging, I I will hold the control button down because uh, I do want a square. All right, so now we drew the blue square. Next, we're going to need to go to Object, Align and Distribute. And the tool that we're going to use 
for this is we're going to uh, use the uh, the center right here, center line right there, and then we're also going to use the center line right there. And uh, but first we need to have two two center lines to compare. So we're going to um, select the green, hit shift, and select the blue. And once we do that, we can go to center line and center line, and it will uh, it will shift shift these squares so that the the middle's the middle and the middle's the middle going on the x and y axis so alright so once we have that then you can go ahead and go to path union because both of those are selected and you have your little uh, little areas that you can write text in to union the text um, it's, it's very simple just go ahead and, and uh, select the text tool right down there you're going to type out what you want you know, I'm just going to type scrappy do. I know you can't see that, so we're going to go ahead and increase that. We're going to go ahead and plug it in there. And, you know, we can zoom in, of course. And uh, if you want it centered, you know, you can use that a lot, the line tools that we, we did. So you can go ahead and select both of those and, you know, hit the middle and uh, that looks good we'll just slide it down there on the part of the green and then you can go to uh, hold the shift button shift button to select and go to union and we just union the uh, the text to our frame right there so that's just that just gives you a clue on what you can do with this you know it's uh it's, it's fairly simple to do and uh, as, as long as you uh, have the time, have the patience in order to, to do something like this, you can use this technique on many other things. So with that, I'm Rob Scrap.